Yes, sir. Hello. Hi, Chef. How are you doing today? Hello. Thanks for the show. I was just calling to ask for a good recipe or ingredients for the cell. So you want the recipe for making a cell? Okay. After the intro. Hey doctor, shooting started. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode. If I ask you if you run your finger on any dustage, how is this related to you? Well, it's not related. It's actually you. It's skin cell or dead skin cell falling off from your skin. Now, imagine a jumbo jet tiger and then imagine 15 to 20 out with everything go all of them, including the acid, compacted into a very small force. Can you really imagine that? What we will do here is we will try to assemble the cell on a large scale. So before we do that simply, why do we need to know about this? First and foremost, to pass through biology class. Second, because the cell is basically you are one cell that keeps the dividing after 40 or 50 division cycle there are 40 to 100 trillion so making up you. second the cell does everything good. and to understand everything in biology apply consciousness evolution and everything in between you need to understand what it is the cell believe it or not when it all started Nobody knew that these small empty spaces they saw under the microscope will change the whole entire world. So how it all started? It all started with Hook, who was a great scientist who first saw the cell. Hook was really good at investigating biology, but he wasn't recognized because he had fights with Isaac Newton. Anyway, he was the first one to describe the cell, the whole cell, which we know from our biology classes refer to the domes of the Mars. The story goes that he was in a park trying to pop up a champagne bottle and the cork hit him on the head. Whether the story is true or not, it just makes the point. Those tiny species we saw under the microscope were actually the dead cell of the cork, using his humble 30x magnification microscope. A few years later, the Royal Society of Science were amazed by the drawings they received from a dreamer under the name of Anthony David Paul, who managed to reach a 300x magnification. And to put that in perspective, our most advanced type of microscope at the moment goes from 400 to 1000 x magnification. So they had a pretty good, strong magnification. Basically, Anthony David Paul saw everything under the microscope, plus saliva molds and even bacteria and other microbes. In fact, the Andre David Hock or the Spider Man is considered the father of microbiology, where he first saw the bacteria and both of them animals. And the story goes that he was the neighbor of a painter who perfected what he would like. That's why he had this great magnification. However, no records has been found and his secret remained and for 200 years, nobody knows the importance of this. <laughs> and actually, at this point of time, scientists thought cells, or we are an inflated version of ourselves. So basically, there is a small name in every single cell. It took us 200 years till 1839, when Brown described the nucleus. He called it the nucleus from the Latin word kernel. We will describe later. In the same year, a dinner between two scientists, one studying the animal cell and one studying the plant cell, they had been hit by the similarity in both cells and they started looking the same thing. All new organs must be made of cells. And cell is the function and structural unit of every living organism, like a picture of that. 
house um, boom, the sale theory was born. The only thing with this theory, when it first came about, they thought that sales comes from pasteurization, basically from nowhere. In the 1860s, the theory was used. However, virtue or again, pathologist, virtue, uh, pathologist in the study of the diseases has corrected the last part of the theory into what we call omnis cellular e cellular, which sounds really sophisticated, however, it translates into cells come from cells. For the next decade or so, scientists started to discover the secrets of the cells. However, the major advances were the discovery of stains and electron microscope. They both enabled us to see every single corner of the cell. The cells are too small to see. Basically, a cell is 20 micro. A false one is 300 micro, which can accumulate to a distance. And the human eye cannot see less than the end of a micro. The cells are also transparent. That's why the electron microscope and steel were great advances for us in understanding the cells. Now we know that cells are like small cities. They send messages, receive messages, talk to each other, generate electricity, process or digest food, just to name a few tasks. Cells are also a perfect example of sustainability with no waste at any point of time. However, all this information looks really poor if we don't enlarge it to a scale that we can picture all of this activity and how the cell can be this environment. Before we go into the cell, we need to remind you that there are two types of cells. The prokaryote, or basically a cell without any test, where the DNA just, just sits into the cell, and the eukaryotes, which have a nucleus, where the DNA is enclosed into the nuclear membrane. If we know that the bacterial cell dimension is 2 by 1 by 1 micron, so using any box or a match box with the dimension of 5 cm, 2.5 by 2.5 cm will do. 2.5 cm here will equal to 1 micron, so it's a scale of 25,000. So a match box like this should do the trick. So with the box, we now we have the cell membrane and the cell wall. So now we have the casing, so we can scale all the cell components on the same scale. The first thing we need to add in the box is DNA. The average bacterial DNA is a long circular piece around 300 to 500 micro in length. So we will need to represent that with a piece of thread, uh, such as like this one with a length of 7.5 meter to 13 meter. And yes, you have the drought. This is the length we need. How we calculate that? DNA is formed of bases, and the distance between each base and the next one is 0.349 meter, multiplied by around a million bases, which is the average number of bases in bacterial DNA. That will give us 340 nanometer. Multiplied by our scale, it will give you the around 7.5 meter to 13 meters. So let's try to fit that in the box. So so that shows us the benefit of the model and shows us how DNA is a very low molecule and needs to be compacted and folded to be accessed to translate the gene into protein. It gets worse even in bigger cells. And if you ask what is the gene, a gene is a piece of this string we try to fit in the box around 10 centimeters. Well, the gene is not constant, it's variable. However, you know, it gives us the general edge. The reality is DNA is a high-end messenger. It has that instruction. In the cell, actually, there is another molecule that does all the work. Let's call it the BD or the personal assistant. The personal assistant in this case is the messenger RNA, which do all the way from transcription to translation into vehicles. And to represent that, we will need around a 10 meter string uh, cut into 10 centimeter. This is 
representation of it. So basically, this piece is a piece of mRNA, which is the negative copy of the gene, or copy of the gene, which will be translated into the ribosomes, which we will discuss later, into protein. Let's fit that in this cell as well. You can see things starting to get jammed. So now we need to consider the ribosome, which is the third element in making protein. There are the big factories of protein synthesis, and for the purpose of our model, we will represent them with a big spoon of lead. That much. Things very well. Blood. Okay. Yes. So now with these three elements in place, if we consider that you have a master document, a photocopy to make a set or two, and a 3D printer which you can use the photocopy to make a copy of this. The three elements, DNA represent the master copy, RNA represents the, the photocopy, and the 3D printer is the ribosome which we represent by that. Putting these three elements together will make the protein, and now we know the basics of genetics. Are we finished yet? Not. Basically, there is one more component we need to add to the cell, which is the protein at the end of the cell. And to do that, we have to represent it by about two spoons of sugar, which we have, but the box is really full. So try to fit that in the box. And there is also the water content, which is around 20 ml. We have to add, so that's four to five spoons, all that in the box. As you can see, well, you try that and you tell me how this adds up and if it's if you can do it. It just gives us a picture of how the cell is busy, how the cell is really compacted, putting a lot of stuff. There is a big difference between that model and the real cell, of course, in which we will have to describe later. Also, we will need to make a model of the bigger cell, and I warn you, this will be not an easy experiment. For that, watch the new episode, subscribe and like.